Hey guys, Hamster Wheel here with a new video and today I want to talk about Warmain's new server called Frostmorn. You see, ever since the lockdown I've been busy making videos and all of a sudden I heard of Warmain starting a new Wrath of the Lich King server. Yes, I know, the one millionth fresh Wrath of the Lich King server. But having played on Warmain before, I knew two things would be certain. Or at least, I assumed they would be certain. 1. Server stability and 2. Very high population. And since this server has 7 times experience rates, I thought it would be a fun pastime to level a character there and experience the madness of getting to max level and maybe do some endgame stuff. So as of right now my warrior is sitting at level 80, has around 2.8k gear score and I've done a little bit of endgame stuff so far. So without further ado, let's talk about this new private server. So what exactly is Warmain Frostmorn? Well, it's a new Wrath of the Lich King server with 7 times experience rate, 3 times reputation rate, 3 times skill rate, and I'm pretty sure drops of green and stuff like that is higher too. They have cross realm enabled for the server for PvP, though they have mentioned that it's only cross realm when people of another realm with the same sort of item level join. And so far I haven't seen any crazy 6k gear score people in my battlegrounds yet, so I guess the system is working. Now the unique twist to the server is that it's seasonal. Yep, seasonal. Basically that means that it will be online for one season and after that the entire server will reset. You won't lose your characters as you can transfer them to another realm, but after the reset you will have to start fresh with a new character again. So whether you like it or not, it's definitely something unique that sets them apart from all the other Wrath servers. Anyway, let's start leveling, and I decided to go for something I never did before. Roll an Orc Warrior on a Wrath server. Trust me, I know very little about this class in general, let alone in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, but that made things more interesting for me. Anyway, as expected, the starting zones were crawling with people, and at every town, like Razor Hill, Crossroads, and so on, there were tons of people running around, trying to do quests and whatnot. It was really fun to see, and kind of reminded me of the Nostalgia's days. And sure, Warmain has a bit of controversy with their population, as some people say their numbers are fake. But whether those numbers are fake or not, it can't be denied that there's a ton of people playing here, so that's definitely good regarding the health of the server. I'm also glad that the staff of Warmain took some measures to make questing a bit more doable. I mean, there were tag wars for a ton of mobs and items, so it was nice to see increased spawn rates for mobs. Though at some points this was a little annoying, as some mobs spawned so fast that before you even got down a pack of 3 mobs, they already started spawning again. I'm looking at you, Stolen Silver Quest, with those damn raptors. Also, now that I'm a warrior, I get to experience the warrior quests, and they were pretty cool, and all seem to work well here. Now up until this point, whether you like Warmain or not, it has to be said that the stability of the server is top notch. There are thousands of people playing here and so far I've experienced maybe one or two lag spikes and zero crashes. Maybe I was just lucky with when I was playing, but considering how most of my time was playing in the evening, so in the busy hours, I'd say that in terms of stability things are looking pretty damn good. Also, now it's time to talk about the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. It's a shit game, wouldn't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Anyway, let's continue. So, after a while, we got to Fairless, where we destroyed some of the ogres, and I slowly but surely started to get the hang of the warrior class. I'm currently leveling up as arms. I mean, I have no idea if that's the best way to level up, but I like it the most. Because, well, Blaze Arm's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, I know, I'm such a warrior noob. Anyway, I teamed up with some people and we did the super tedious chicken escort quest, but it was worth it, as it gives you a ton of experience. Then later down the line we got to Outlands, and oh boy, it was utter chaos. You see in Hellfire Peninsula there's multiple places where both Alliance and Horde got a complete and handing quests. And while some of them didn't do anything because they were trying to level up, some took it upon themselves to gank someone, and then some other guy joined in, and then two other guys from the other faction tried to step in, and dead bodies everywhere, and no one could continue the quest. There was also some 68 death knight who decided to stop leveling, go back to Thralmar, where all the level 61 hordies were trying to level up, 
and just hunted them down and two-shotted them. Which was annoying, but yeah, it's a PvP server and it's warming, so it's part of the course. Fortunately though, most people decided not to bother with ganking. I mean, this early into a server, most people are just occupied with trying to get to max level. But don't worry though, give it a week or two and this server will have that classic war main flavor to it. And with that, I mean level 80s in full epics preying on low levels at Thralmar or Honor Ult, or right in front of the Dark Portal. But apart from the mess that was Hellfire Peninsula, leveling in Outland went pretty smooth. And all throughout Outland, I once again maybe experienced one quest that acted weird, but I could complete all of them, and again very little issues with server stability. Then we arrive at Northrend, and well, as a crab geared warrior, it was a bit of a struggle. You see, the upside of leveling on a 7x rate experience server is that you get to enjoy endgame content pretty quickly. The downside is that you will outgear yourself really quickly, and getting gear from quests can keep up with how fast you level up. So, especially melee classes like the warrior will have a rough time leveling up, especially someone who's playing a melee class they know very little about. Yes, yes, I struggled a fair bit. However, slowly but surely, I managed to get closer and closer to level 80. And I spent most of my time doing quests in the Grizzly Hills, as I know the main camp at Cholasar Basin was going to be a total mess as well in terms of ganking. There was one problem though. Because you're leveling up so fast, it also means you're broke most of the time. I mean, you can get your flying mount to level 60, but I think I got mine maybe 9 or 10 levels later because I was just struggling for gold. And in Northrend, things kind of repeated itself. I eventually got the required level, but I was still missing 600 gold for Northrend flying skill. So all those cool quests in the Storm Peaks, like the Sons of Hoder quest chain, yeah, not really doable. So I just had to stick to lower level zones and level up there. Though with the 7x experience rate, it wasn't that much of a hassle and leveling still went quite fast. And then, sooner or later, I hit level 80 and got my flying mount. It was also quite marvelous to see just how packed cities like Orgamar and Dalaran were, though for some reason Dalaran had this weird random logout bug that makes you log out out of nowhere. So just keep that in mind when you're queued for something and you all tap quickly to, well, whatever website you want to visit. Chances are you'll find yourself logged out later on, and of course when you log back in, you're out of the queue. So just queue up for something, and while queued, stay the hell away from Dalaran. I also want to add, it was really cool to see everyone still in starter gear. I mean, I've always seen Dalaran packed with people flexing their 36 different mounts and full epic 25-man ICC gear. This time though, everyone looked like they were just starting their adventure, which definitely levels the playing field. So one of the quest chains I wanted to do at level 80 was the Scarlet Crusade quest close to Ice Crown. And with so many people running around, it was a bit of a nightmare. At some point, I decided to just camp one spot, wait for the respawn, kill that, and just rinse and repeat. Which was definitely not ideal, but that's what you have to expect with such a large population. I mean, this was just part of the course in Nostalrius 2. Also, the part where you have to man the cannon and defend the outpost is... kinda wonky, and definitely took some time to complete, but I managed to complete it after a bit. And after a few Winter Grasps, I did a quick VOA 25 and also did some Battlegrounds, which had the regular type of stuff in it. Like people always complaining why this faction loses, people making catapults when you're supposed to make siege engines, you know, the typical Wrath private server stuff. Anyway, for now, I'll stop right here. So after having leveled up this character, having done some endgame stuff, what do I think of the server? Well, let's recap. The leveling experience was all in all pretty great. Lots of people and zones really felt alive. Pretty much every quest I did was working properly, and GMs were actually quite active in world chat too, like Proterion. And while some people were definitely toxic, I definitely had a fair bit of fun with other hordies, teaming up and working together to do quests. The ganking in Outlands was not ideal, but then again it's a PvP server, so that's just bound to happen. When it happens, just remember the name, get to 80, get some PvP gear, and then take revenge when you see them. So the server health is really good, people have a lot of interest in this project and there's just a ton of stuff to do. And because the server is still fresh, the requirements for things like guilds, random pug runs and stuff like that aren't ridiculously high, so even a scrub like me could join something like VOA25 or something similar. 
So, would I recommend the server? Well, here's the thing. The server does have a queue and the server will have more items available in the cash shop the further the server progresses. Yes, unfortunately the server is also plagued with the cash shop. But if you're okay with those two things and you prefer higher rates and you also want a new Wrath server, well then this might not be too bad of an option for you. I mean I haven't put a ton of hours in this server, nor do I think I will invest a ton of time in this character. But for the time I played here, I had a great time. So there you go, Warmain's new Frostmourne server. Definitely not perfect, but it offers a solid experience with a super high population. And for some people, that's all they want. So there you go folks, my thoughts on the new Warmain server Frostmourne. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamsterwheel and have a good one.